Welcome back. My name is Gladys Nyatich and this is GN Inspire, where we share all things education, career, and personal development. In this episode, we are going to talk about personal statement. And number one, I'll share five tips that I think you should incorporate so that your personal statement stands out. Number two, I'll read out loud example from a personal statement that I wrote sometimes back. Before we go on, I, I would like to request a favor. May is my birthday month, and the only wish I have for me is to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of this month, by the end of May. I know it's an audacious goal, but I know we might get there. We will get there. And so the only birthday gift that I'm gonna request from you guys is to subscribe. So kindly subscribe only if you like this kind of content. Then ask a friend or two to do the same. Thank you. Five tips that I think you should include in your personal statement. Number one, do research. What kind of skills, experiences are these people looking for? What kind of students are they looking for? For example, the fellowship that I applied, the, the example that we are going to read, they were looking for someone with leadership skills, someone with global outlook on things, etc., etc. And so when you're writing your personal statement, now that you know what they are looking for, every sentence, every paragraph should be addressing or bringing out or confirming those things that they are looking for, those skills and experiences that they are looking for. Otherwise, you will be wasting your words if every sentence and every paragraph is not speaking to those skills and experiences that those people are looking for. Remember, it's not a random story. Yes, I know, they said, tell us about your life or your academic life. They are not asking for a random story. You are selectively picking out some bits and pieces of your life or from your, from your academic life, from your experiences, from your career. A story that will answer the question, why you and why them? Number two, start early. I would say avoid waiting until the last minute to write your personal statement. Like we've said, it's not a random story. And so for you to pull out bits and pieces from your life, from your academics, it's not an easy thing. So I would recommend that you start as early as possible, maybe one month out, two months, even one year if it's possible, so that you're able to capture important details or examples from your life. Number three, quantify as much as possible. In this episode where I talked about interview tips, I talked about the importance of quantifying. For instance, if someone says I was top of my class, being top of a class of five people and being top of a class of 1,000 people, those are two different scenarios. And so when you are writing your story, try and quantify. You were top of your class. What was the size? You won this grant. How many people applied? Etc. Etc. Number four, show, don't tell. If this scholarship is looking for someone with leadership skills, an all-rounded person, and uh, someone excelling in class, telling would be saying, I qualify for this fellowship or for this scholarship because I'm an all-rounded person, because I have leadership skills, because etc. etc. That is telling. Why should we believe you? You've not given us an, an example for us to actually believe what you say. So don't tell, show. And how do you show? You give a vivid, brief story where you actually demonstrated that kind of skill that you are talking about. So if it's leadership, you say, I have leadership skills. For instance, in my undergrad, I was selected as a class leader where I was leading a class of 80 students and I led for five years. In fact, I even got this award and this award, etc. I'm an all-rounded person. Aside from class, I also do music, I do comedy. In fact, my Instagram page has one million views or whatever. Now, that is showing. So give us examples from the past where you demonstrated that kind of skill you're talking about. So, so show, don't tell. Last one, referees. This is something that many students don't pay close attention to. So you've written a stellar, an excellent personal statement. But then your referees, they've written maybe one sentence about you. So this is what you do with the referees. 
most scholarships will ask you to give contact details of one, two, three, four, five referees who will then write stories about you. Number one, look for referees who can write something meaningful, substantial about you. A referee you know will be diligent and they'll write that re reference and submit. But also, it's your duty to make sure you follow up, make sure they've written the reference and they've submitted on time. Number two, and most importantly, I would say sometimes the referees, they, they might not know all your stories, right? So this is what you do. You prepare your CV. Make sure you highlight key points. And again, remember, highlighting key points that speak to the skills and experiences that this fellowship or this scholarship is looking for. So you prepare a CV and highlight key points. Number two, you make a skeleton of your personal statement. So you list top, say, top five um, skills and experiences that the scholarship is looking for. So for instance, in my case, they wanted someone who is excelling in class. So I would say excelling in class, number two, leadership, number three, all-roundedness or extracurricular activities. Number four, they were looking for interdisciplinary STEM students, people in science, technology, engineering, mathematics. So then, from those key skills or key priorities that the, the fellowship was looking for, in each category, you make sure you give at least three examples. So I will literally write down something like this. Number one, leadership. And then I'll give three examples where I've demonstrated leadership. So this is how to also write a very nice um, brief situation where you've demonstrated leadership. Again, go back to this video or this episode where I explained how to give answers to situational questions. For instance, when, when it, uh, during the interview they ask you, tell us a situation when you demonstrated leadership. So this is the format that you, you would use the same format, the five W's, right? So if it's leadership, I would say the five W's, where, when, what was happening, etc etc so that is a skeleton of your personal statement because even you when you're writing your personal statement you will pretty much be telling your story around these five key priorities that the fellowship or the scholarship is um, is looking for so write uh, uh, do your research understand what they are looking for then each each of those points each of those priorities you give at least three examples then Together with your CV and, and this skeleton of your personal statement, you submit to your referees so that when they are writing reference about you, stories of your life, of your academics, of your experiences, at least they have wealth of examples to pull from. So that when the, inter, when the selection committee or the interviewing panel, when they are reading your, your materials, when they are reading your personal statement, and reading your refer references or referees materials, there is a common story. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where you spend so much time. It will be really sad if you spend so much time making ex excellent personal statement and then your refer re referees to only let you down and submit one statement or even fail to submit references. So pay attention to referees. Let's go to my example. Let's read out some, some. so this is not a full statement that I wrote. It was longer than this because the, 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 the word limit was a bit generous. So I've picked out some, some bits and pieces from that personal statement just for demonstration purposes. Number one, here on the, before we read, I imagine most of these statements nowadays, they are submitted electronically. So I would say, write your name and I hyperlink it or just below your name give us an address to your personal website or your linkedin page most of the reviewers when they are reading they might not have time to click all those links you've provided but i think it's still really important just in case they have some time when they click on your personal um, website or they go to your profile they can read more about you because remember personal statements they most of the time they have uh, word limits and so maybe it was 500 words so you are not able to tell all these wonderful things you've been doing so by adding that link then the reviewer if they have some time they can click on that link and they can read more about you let's read my statement like i said this is just bits and pieces so it's not a full story but i've just selected some uh, this part 
to highlight or to give examples to what we've just talked, the five tips. So they were looking for excellent performers, like people with excellent grades. So in my statement, you will see I've, I've used top, top these, top, top 1%, etc., etc. et cetera. I was admitted to one of Kenya's top engineering universities, JQuad. You can see that I could, I could have said I was admitted to JQuad. But then globally, this was a global fellowship actually. So they might not understand the rank of the university. So that's why I, I, I had to kind of fix uh, Kenya's top engineering university. I was admitted to one of Kenya's top engineering universities, JQuat, to study mechanical engineering. At JQuat, aside from working hard in class, I made a conscious effort to involve myself in non-academic roles. From the first year, I was elected a class leader and served in this position for five years. Leading a class of eight bright students from very diverse backgrounds and cultures forced me to refine my leadership skills. I'm using exact words that they used in the call for application. They said, we are looking for someone with leadership skills. So it's important, don't use synonyms. If they're looking for leadership skills, in your statement, make sure you use the exact word leadership skills. The reason why this is important is because someone told me, and I think I had never thought of it, that assuming they have 10,000 applications, there is a hard chance that they will not go through all of those statements one at a time. What they'll do, they'll use a computer software to skim through all these statements and then the software will be asked to pick only to pick those statements that have at least three of these things so they might say pick all those statements that have leadership extracurricular and and exceptional grades or something like that i don't know gpa4 or something like that so then the software will skim through all the statements and only select running checking all those words in your personal statement so imagine if you used synonyms Yes, you have leadership skills, but you used some other words, I don't know, manager or whatever it is. The software will not be able to differentiate. I would encourage you to make a list of those important skills and experiences that these people are looking for, say leadership experience, leadership experiences, all-roundedness, and use those exact words, sprinkle them all through your statement. And as you can see, I'm showing instead of telling. I had an option of just saying I have leadership skills. But then, as you can see, I'm saying from the first year, I was elected a class leader and I served in this position for five years. I went on to say, leading a class of 80 bright students from very diverse backgrounds and cultures forced me to refine my leadership skills. So that is a situation where you are showing. I'm also saying, um, I could have just said I led my class, but then what was the size? Leading a class of two people and leading a class of 100 people, those are two different scenarios. And so you are you are seeing I'm, I'm also quantifying. So quantify as much as possible because by quantifying, you're painting a more vivid picture of the situation. In 2013, I was awarded the Barbaroa Excellence Award for emerging the best student in my class. They were looking for students with a track record of excellent grades. And so that's why I'm bringing this example. I see myself as tomorrow's leader, leading innovations in the world. They were looking for people with global outlook. I have always sought to expand, to expand my scope of the world, especially in the field of science and technology. Remember, they were looking for STEM students. For instance, this is where now I am showing instead of telling because there was an option of just stopping there. But then that is not enough. Anyone can say that. Anyone can say, I see myself as tomorrow's leader, or I can do innovations in the world, or I have a global outlook. But why should we believe you? So you have to give us an example. So this is where I'm giving this example. For instance, in 2013, I applied and I got selected as one of the few students from Kenya. So. And this is what I should have done. I should have actually gotten the exact number. I don't know what the exact number is, but I think it would have made more sense to get like exact number so that I just see is one of, I don't know, five students or seven students. But anyway, 
I applied and got selected as one of the few students from Kenya to represent the country in the International Students Festival in Trondheim. Actually, for those of you guys who are still in uni, it's, it's an amazing opportunity and it's open to anyone. So go to ESFIT website and apply. I actively participated in a two-week rigorous and educative program that enormously expanded my understanding of the world's technology. The highlight was connecting and networking with over 450 students from across the globe. That is showing and not telling. So when you read that example, then you can see that, hey, Gladys actually is very intentional about being a global leader. In fact, in undergrad, she was already looking for these global opportunities to network and travel. We continue. In 2015, I graduated top 1% of my class. You, you can see I'm sprinkling these phrases, top 1%, top this, top this, because they were looking for top performance. In 2015, I graduated top 1% of my class. This, in addition to my inspirational leadership and sports prowess, earned me the Rhodes Scholarship, where I was one of the only two students elected in the whole of Kenya that year. Quantify. If I said, for those who don't understand or those who don't know, many people know how prestigious Rhodes Scholarship is, and it, I think it would just be okay to say I was selected as a Rhodes Scholar. But then, for someone reading and they don't know what this Rhodes Scholarship is all about, saying you are selected a Rhodes Scholar and saying you are selected as a Rhodes Scholar where you are one of the only two in the entire country, it kind of paints a different picture. So quantify. I went on to pursue a PhD in engineering science at the University of Oxford. My passion for thermofluids saw me join the Oxford Thermofluids Institute to research novel cooling technologies for aerospace applications. This was the first time I got a taste of interdisciplinary research. They wanted students in STEM and also students with some interdisciplinary research experience or at least interest in interdisciplinary research. And so you see, I'm trying to show that, hey, actually, I've done some interdisciplinary research already during my PhD. My research work has been featured in top articles, including BBC Science, Nature, and some of the top newspapers in Kenya. Again, they were looking for top performers. And that's why you see that I'm flushing out some, some, of, the, uh, some of these major recognition. Like if BBC Science has written about you, or your science, then that is something notable. And that's why you see I'm bringing all this up. They were looking for top performance. Early this year, I was awarded alongside 23 other students worldwide. Again, quantifying. It paints a very different picture when you say you are one of the only 23 students selected worldwide. To lead and inspire the next generation of women engineers, I've been working with uh, blah, 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 these organizations, organizing engineering projects aimed at engaging the public in science and engineering, as well as raising profiles of women in STEM. Remember, they were looking for STEM students and also like leadership, demonstrated leadership. What are you doing in the community where you are? In July, I was named in the UK's top 10 rare rising stars, where the judges included high-profile individuals like these individuals with their titles OBE. I think it's Order of British Empire. If the judges who were selecting top 10 rare rising stars included these individuals with OBE titles, then it tells you it was a big deal. Again, you're trying to paint the context just to show how important or how prestigious or high profile the recognition was. Toward the end, remember we said, this is not a random story. You are selectively bringing out bits and pieces of your life, of your educational life, of your, of your work experiences to answer the question, why you and why them? And so somewhere towards the end, I like to talk about why them. This XX Fellowship will offer me an exceptional platform to not only further hone my scientific research skills, but also strengthen my leadership skills, as well as network with bright scholars this fellowship attracts. Through the global seminars that the fellowship organizes, 
how do I know that they organize global seminars? Tip number one, I did my research and I actually noted that they do all these seminars where they, like I write here, where I'll get a rare chance to learn. So these global seminars where they teach um, societal and scientific leadership, they teach how to communicate with policymakers, they teach all these things. So th these are the things that I got during my research. And you make sure you put somewhere in your personal statement. It just shows that you are really kind of understand, maybe not 100%, but at least you understand what this thing will be all about. And you show that in your personal statement. So I write that through the global seminars that the fellowship organizes, I'll get a real chance to learn among other topics, societal and scientific leadership, etc., etc., etc. If you've written a, an excellent personal statement and you've been invited for an interview, go to episode four where I talked about some interview tips and I also give out some examples from my own interviews. All the best. Bye until the next time.